Hi everyone, Miss Tui here. Today you are going to turn Ozobot into a pollinator to create an interactive model of a flower garden to show how animals help with pollination. For today's lesson, you will need an Ozobot, fully charged and calibrated, tape, scissors, color code markers, a pencil, colored pencils or crayons, and all three pages of your pollination garden activity sheets. In today's lesson, you will use lines and color codes to program your bot to mimic a pollinator. Then you will follow the sequence of your pollinator to identify which flowers were pollinated and to collect data. Did you know animals help plants make other plants by moving pollen? These animals are called pollinators. Some common pollinators include bees, hummingbirds, butterflies, ladybugs, and bats. Flowers have a powder, typically yellow in color, called pollen. Pollen is used to make seeds in a process called pollination. These seeds grow into buds or baby flowers. In order for pollination to occur, pollen must move from the stamen of one flower to the stigma of another flower. Since plants can't move, pollinators, animals that eat pollen or drink nectar, move pollen from one plant to another as they continue to feed themselves. Now that you know about pollinators, it's time to create your interactive model. You will begin with the pollination garden map. The map has multiple lines or pathways for your bot to travel around with 14 missing color codes. In the bottom left of your map is the color codes key to help you put in the correct color sequences to program your bot to act like a pollinator. The first missing color code shows three empty boxes and will be the color code to set the speed of your bot. I am going to have my pollinator travel slow, so I will put in the slow code. The other missing color codes will be spin or win play again. I will use my color code markers to complete each sequence of empty boxes. Can you use your color code markers and color codes key to complete the pathways for your pollinator? The number of boxes match the number of colors needed for the missing color code. Great job applying your color coding skills to complete the pathways on your model. You're ready to make your map look more like a garden. You will use the pollination garden pieces sheet to help. You will color the flowers using primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. Make sure to use all three colors. For example, I colored three red flowers, four blue flowers, and three yellow flowers. After your flowers are colored, you will cut them out and tape or glue them onto your map. A flower should be placed near each spin code. Here's what my map looks like with the flowers added to it. Your turn to color your flowers red, yellow, or blue. Then cut the flowers out and glue or tape them near a spin code on your map. When a pollinator takes pollen from one flower to another, a seed can form. You will use the seeds to mark which flowers were pollinated when your bot travels through the garden. Look back at your garden pieces sheet and cut out the seeds. I cut my seeds out and placed them in a neat pile like this. After you cut out your seeds, you will choose what animal or pollinator your bot is going to act like and create a costume to match. I chose my bot to be a bee. First, I designed the costume, then I cut the costume out and taped it around my bot.
Your turn to cut out the seeds, design a costume for your bot, and dress your bot. Remember to dress your bot as a pollinator, a bee, hummingbird, butterfly, ladybug, or bat. Now that your garden map is complete and your pollinator bot is ready, it's time to test out your model. To test out your model, you will put your pollinator on start. Then you will watch your pollinator move to different flowers in the garden to see which flowers get pollinated. Let's look at mine in action. First, my pollinator moved to the red flower. I know it moved to this flower because it spun. This is where my pollinator picked up the pollen. Next, it moved to the yellow flower. I know it moved to this flower because it spun. At the second flower, a seed can be made, so I will put a seed on this flower. Then my pollinator moved to the blue flower. So I will put another seed on the blue flower. Since the paths your bot is traveling along are made of intersecting lines and you have not programmed your bot to move in certain directions, your bot will randomly choose to turn left, right, or move straight. This means each time you run your pollinator from start, it will visit a different number of flowers. Time to test your model. Put your pollinator on start and place seeds on the flowers your animal pollinates. Remember, the first flower does not get pollinated because this is where the animal collects the pollen. Wonderful work creating an interactive model to show how animals help with pollination. You can now use your model to collect data or information about the flowers that were pollinated. Look at the pollination garden data sheet. You will run your pollinator bot two more times, but first you will complete trip one. Here's the data from my first trip. First, my bot went to a red flower, so I colored flower number one red. Then my bot traveled to a yellow flower, so I will color flower number two yellow. Then my bot moved to a blue flower, so I colored flower number three blue. After I know the sequence or order my bot traveled, I can complete each row. After trip one was complete, I put my pollinator back on start to see which flowers it would travel to next. During trip two, my bee moved in a different sequence. You can see in my data, my bot went first to a yellow flower, then to a blue flower, then to a red flower, then to a yellow flower, followed by a blue flower. Can you put your bot on start and complete the pollinator trip one chart to track the sequence or order of flowers your animal visited? Then put your bot on start a second time and complete the pollinator trip to chart. Great job collecting some data or information about the flowers your animal pollinated. Now you can analyze or look at your data to have fun with colors and make predictions. At the bottom of your pollination garden data sheet is a color key. The key shows you, when the primary colors are mixed together, a new secondary color is made. You will use this key to predict what colors the baby flowers or buds in your garden would be after the seeds grew. In my Trip 1 data chart, the first flower visited was red and the second flower was yellow. I can predict that the bud in my garden would be orange using what I know about primary and secondary colors. I will use the color key to predict the color 
on the rest of the buds. Can you use your color key to predict what color the buds in your garden would be? Finally, you will use your math skills to answer questions that summarize your data. Use the TRIP1 and TRIP2 data charts to answer the four questions. The pollinator was A. How many flowers were pollinated in all? Which color would the most buds be? Which color would the least buds be? After your interactive model and data are complete, share your model and data with your teacher, a relative, or a friend. Can you answer all four questions to summarize your data? Remember to check the work before you share. Your map should have 14 completed color codes, 10 flowers, one near each spin code. Your data should show the sequence of the two trips your bot took around the garden, the predictions about the colors of your new buds, and the total number of flowers pollinated and buds made. Your work should show an interactive model of how animals help with pollination. Come back again soon for our next lesson.